growing up in poverty, mm-hmm. you know, um, the low expectations, you know, what research mm-hmm. says about, you know, kids who grow up without uh, two parents in the home, the poverty, you know, the low expectations. And um, right out of high school, joined the military. One of the absolute best things that could have ever happened for me because um, you saw my grandmother didn't play. <laughs> what, the one with the, who would take you outside? And uh, Mother Kemp was a deaconess full of the Holy Ghost, but she could get you right in yes, a heartbeat. For real. Hello and welcome to the Catalyst Podcast. I'm David Carter for David Carter's Catalyst Podcast, where we are provoking positive change. I'm so excited today to have as a guest with me someone I've known for literally all of my life, uh, Jackie Kemp. How are you doing, Jackie? I'm well, thank you. Glad to be here. I'm glad to have you. I'm just sitting here grinning, right? <laughs> and so I'm thinking about all these things. Well, we're kind of going to get into that, but this is the Catalyst Podcast, and so I want to read what a catalyst is. When I read this, just start to think about certain things developmentally for where you were and then where you are right now. Um, A catalyst is an agent that provokes or speeds significant change or action. Something that provokes or speeds significant change or action. Now, when I think about you, right, and I think about us and and the history we have, uh, there are a couple of songs that come to mind. One of them is, as I look back over my life, mm-hmm. and I think things over, <laughs> Yeah, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. And the other is, look where he brought me from. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Cue the heaven. <laughs> brought me out of darkness, right? Yes. <laughs> Into the marvelous yep. light. Jackie, t- tell, for our, uh, tell our listeners and our viewers a little bit about who you are and where you come from, and there, we'll kind of fill in the gaps, and then talk about who you are and what you're doing right now. Yeah. So, as you know, I'm number seven of eight children my mother had. Um, I was a year old when my mother died. My brother next to me was six months, so we're all stair step. My grandmother raised us. Mother Kemp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 So, you know, you talk about mm. growing up in poverty, mm. you know, um, the low expectations, you know, what research mm. says about, you know, kids who grow up without uh, two parents in the home, the poverty, you know, the low expectations. And um, right out of high school, joined the military. One of the absolute best things that could have ever happened for me because um, you saw my grandmother didn't play. <laughs> what, the one with the, who would take you outside? And uh, Mother Kemp was a deaconess full of the Holy Ghost, but she could get you right in yes, a heartbeat. For real. So, um, so I was always in trouble. You <laughs> I was always in trouble, but it was so funny joining the military. It was like it it be, kind of became a positive thing where it was always, you know, I was bad, getting in trouble, you know, always trying to tell people what to do. I joined the military and my drill sergeant was like, yes, get in the front, do this. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. I get to do this? Like, I'm not bad. This is not bad. So um, I really got to grow into the leader that I was, to grow into and be challenged to be so much better. So, you know, I got my associate's degree. That was a huge deal. Um, got my bachelor's, two children. Um, Wait, now, we, you got your associate's while you were in the Army? Mm-hmm. Yep. You're in the army now, <laughs> and you get your associates. Well, I got my, so what? At yeah. what? Um, what age did you go into the the army? Seventeen, right out of high school. Okay, so that's why you just disappeared from the face of the yep. earth. Yep, yep, yep. You yep. just went away. <laughs> I went away. <laughs> you went right out of high school. So whose idea was it to, uh, so. to, to put you in the military? Was it your idea? It was because okay. you know, I had left my grandmother's house. I was staying at my cousin's, and I was getting ready to graduate. So it's like, okay, graduation is here. What do you do? Like, you go back to your grandmother because you can't stay here. Like, what are you going to do? So the military just offered Mm -hmm. 
the best solution for me at that time, you know, um, and I'm so grateful for that. I love to challenge people because that was a challenge for me. Like, um, I don't want to live on the streets. I'm not going back to my grandmother's house. <laughs> <laughs> because so, which would have been worse, uh, the streets or your grandmother's listen, house? Listen, <laughs> she didn't play. She had. And I just felt like um, out of all of my, me, my siblings, my cousins, I was always the one that was in trouble all the time. Could it be, Jackie? Could it be? Because your grandmother knew what was in, I mean, come on now. And I really believe She that. knew what was in you. And she, she that. And that's why she had to put her foot down to protect you from you. Possibly. When I became um, a mother, I appreciated her. When I became a single parent, I really, for the first time, saw my grandmother as a single parent. I saw her... Like, I thought she was the meanest person on the planet. I was never going to be like her. And well, she I might did. not have been the meanest, but she was. She didn't she, play. She was one of them. <laughs> she was militant. <laughs> she would get everybody. She was militant. Yeah. So it's funny because in the military basic training, mm -hmm. I got to laugh at a lot of things because it's like scrub the toilet. Oh, like, this is hurting me. Let me show you a method. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you some comment. Let me get you a toothbrush. Boy, you ain't got nothing. Listen, Teach the military some look, methods. Meet, meet my grandmother, <laughs> Miss Mary. Uh, <laughs> you know, meet her, talk to her. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that basic training, it, there were so many laughs that I had because it was like, yeah, okay, this is not hard. But mm -hmm. because my grandmother was... She was rigid. She was militant. You know, it, it's so funny. As old as I am right now. And how, how old are you? Never mind. Because I know you never ask a woman. <laughs> and I know you ain't going to tell because you've been like 29 for 18,000 years. Well, I'm 45 now. <laughs> <laughs> Plus. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, it's yeah. like in all of this time, I still, I get up, I make my bed. I don't sit around, you know. Mm. I mean, it's just, and talk to my siblings. And they all are still doing the same thing, mm. what we grew up with. Like, you get up, you know, you focus. Like, you have something to do. There's something to do, somewhere to go. My grandmother, you know, this whole thing about I'm bored. You know, I need something to do. Yeah, you better assign yourself because mm -hmm. we did not want her to, to assign, assign yeah. us mm -hmm. like something to do to get yeah. us from not being bored. But I, so many of those things, I did that to my kids. You know, you get up, you clean up behind yourself. Just all of these things that I said I would never do, I did. And I was so grateful that I could tell my grandmother repeatedly, thank you so much mm -hmm. for the sacrifice. Thank you for um, making me do things that I didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying no when I really wanted it to be a yes. You know, um, I'm so grateful for all of that. So spent 21 mm -hmm. years in the military, married, divorced, two children, um, bachelor's degree, Retired 2001 here. My sister Mary was here. She and her husband. Her husband had. Wait, so you, you retired 2000 from the military. Yeah. So you retired from the military. 2001. And came here in 2001. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Went to OSU full time. Um, that was my first time as a college student, a full time college student. <laughs> Let's do the math. Okay, go ahead. I know, right? Yeah. So, yeah, retired. Went to school full time, um, got my master's in part of getting out the military, my whole decision. Um, I had a, a, a real conversion, you know, I mean, I grew up in church, did all of the church things, mm -hmm. but I really didn't have a personal relationship with Christ. So here I am confronted with different things in mm -hmm. my life. Um, and I really grew into, into that, um, who I am in Christ, like just reading the application and really changing my life and um, just kind of had this, I don't even know what to call it. Just one night I was sitting on the couch and just, you know, thinking, imagining, nothing in particular. And, and it was 
like, hey, if I could do anything, what would it do? What would I do? What would I, what would I be? And all of a sudden, self-employed was one of the things that just really I felt God was leading me to be self-employed. Typically, you spend, you have a career in the military, you retire. A lot of people get civil service jobs. That mm-hmm. was the pathway for me originally. But just this whole self-employed thing, trusting God, trusting God as a single parent coming to Ohio. My kids were in high school. It was hard for them to leave the military life, to come to, like, no military, Mm -hmm. just totally different surrounding and environment. But um, God is so faithful. I graduated. My son graduated from high school, went to OU, graduated. My daughter went to OU, Mm -hmm. graduated. My son continued um, with law school, Capital University, graduated. So he spent uh, several, about five years as a county prosecutor's office. We're in, here, here, in, in, here, here Franklin in Columbus. County. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, now he's in Minnesota. So where, where is he now and what is he doing? He's in Minnesota. He's a judge. He's a judge. At, he's at what a age? Judge. He became a judge at 35. Okay. Yep. Now, let me just, uh, for our audience, just to kind of give you um, perspective on this. You know, Jackie was one of how many? Of eight. Yep. You were the one. Um, you were the, I don't want to say the problem <laughs> child, but I, 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 the spirited one. <laughs> right. Grandmother, um, yep. I think, saw something in you. You wanted to protect you from yourself. Um, and I think she was a catalyst. Yep. Okay. She was. She was a catalyst. And then, um, 17, you go into the military. And the training that you got, that you received in, in boot camp, you said, here you are. All these things that yep. you had, had been instilled in you, yep. um, they're galvanized here in this place, in the military. And you already had the discipline. Okay, Single mother, you saw your grandmother raising all of you. And now here you are in Ohio. You have children. Uh, you've gone, you're at Ohio State University. You got, you got your master's. And now here you are self-employed. Yeah. Right. In 2000. Yeah. 2004, I got my first contract. Okay. Now I came here, I came here in 1999. Okay. 1998. Yeah, 1998 as a pastor of Second Baptist Church, you know, then 1999, you know, 2K, we thought the whole world was going to stop, you know, <laughs> with computers and all that. And I didn't know you were here. We, after all, from 17 to, to whenever, I had no idea where you were. You know, I wasn't looking for you, right? But <laughs> yeah. had, we just never connect. But yeah. we connect here. Yeah. Of yep. all places, yep. who would have yep. thought <laughs> that from Hartford, Connecticut, Mount Mariah Baptist Church, 222 Barber Street, Hartford, Connecticut, shout out to Mount Mariah, <laughs> right? Who would have thought that we'd be here at this time, yep. self-employed, yep. and now you're self-employed with a, a wonderful organization, and I can say that because I, I'm very familiar with what you do. Tell us about your self-employment opportunity and your, your academy. Talk, tell us about... Lead the way. Did I lead you in, in the way? Come on. Come on, Nelson. <laughs> right. Lead the Way Learning Academy. Um, the, the name, Lead the Way, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll just kind of, you know, being prayerful, was in the book of Acts. Okay. And, you know, followers of the way just, Come on, it now. just really. You were paying attention in Sunday school. Somewhat. <laughs> oh, I, I'll go, I won't say nothing. <laughs> you heard something. The Lord planted a seed. Yeah, yeah, really. Okay. Followers of the way was just a real big thing. Didn't think much of it, but it just it was just all there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm trying to think. You know, what is a name? You know, and the Holy Spirit just one morning in my quiet time lead the way leadership. Education Mm -hmm. and diversity (laughs) lead. My military, my, you know, it was all about leadership, diversity, uh, equal opportunity, education. As I was getting ready to retire, Mm -hmm. I mean, I spent years as a, as a equal opportunity advisor. I mean, and it was just, I'm telling you, it was, it was God inspired because we, for Mm -hmm. me, I know as a follower of Christ that 
Jesus leads the way. Mm -hmm. I'm following him. Mm -hmm. And so the work that I do, Lead the Way Learning Academy, we provide youth development, youth leadership, and um, youth workforce development. And it has just been such a blessing for me to provide opportunities. So mm -hmm. our mission is we provide purpose, direction, motivation, and opportunity. And we do purpose, that. Purpose, direction, motivation, motivation, and opportunity. And opportunity. Okay. Yep. And we do that through uh, the programming that we offer. So we have after school, we have summer camps, mm -hmm. we have internships, job placements, paid internships even. Mm -hmm. So it's just a number of things to help young people really find value in themselves mm -hmm. and know that God has a purpose for them. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose and a plan. Let me show you how. We're going to lead the way. Follow me. You know, the military, we have this thing. Follow me. Uh, lead the way. And then, you know, Lead the way. You, you're talking about you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, yeah. follow me. Paul says, follow me as I follow, right? Yes. As I follow Christ. And you got that the followers of uh, uh, people in the way. And now you are yeah. leading the way in all these different, um, all these di different um, environments and situations. Um, from what, um, what ages do you service for, in terms of uh, the ages, the age range? So kindergarten through 12th grade 18 19 mm -hmm. um so we have k through five we have middle school six through eight and then high school nine through 12 uh we've really been emphasizing the last two years since covid uh we've really really worked hard on our high school program helping young people with their transition you know covid was hard for a lot of people a lot of folks lost hope. A lot mm. of our young kids lost hope. And focus. You know, focus, yeah. the direction. direction yep. um, so we have really hit that hard. So not only do we provide after school, summer programming, but school day programming. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of partners who, you know, kids that were at risk of not graduating, we provide these credential trainings Um and you know that. I know about that. <laughs> so what it is, those at risk yep. in terms of graduation, because yep. for whatever reason, whether it's COVID, um, it, they got off track. Yep. What, lead, what Part of what Lead the Way does is it, it's like an in intervention. Yep. And helps provide yep. certain programs and yep. training so they can, get, they can get high school, they can get credit for it. Yep. Towards graduation. Yep. Okay. Yep. We offer up to 12 points. We have been this year diligently working on um, the opportunity to provide pre-apprenticeships this summer. So the pre-approved pre-apprenticeships. So we have kids that will have the opportunity to earn 12 points towards graduation this summer. Okay. So the goal is... You're working, you get these credentials, you get this training. In the fall, we're going to put you to work and pay you the intern. So you'll get paid to get experience. You've gotten the credentials. You know, sometimes folks say, hey, I want to be a teacher. And then they go to college, spend all this money, go in debt. And, uh, you know, Tell me about the first day it. in yeah. the classroom was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't want to do this. So we want to provide you know, expose kids to different things maybe they thought they wanted or things they didn't even know was available and give them the training mm -hmm. that they need to make them successful. And so exposure. exposure. Exposure is everything. To different, because they might, they might not know what's out there. Mm -hmm. And I, I uh, full disclosure, I, I've worked uh, as a consultant or as a, as a trainer yep. um, with Lead the Way. And it's just been one of the most enriching parts of my um my business working with young people and and seeing the potential that's within them and then challenging them yep. i tell them you know there's no free ride and so it's always important to know that you have to make sure that you always have good references and that people will say um kind things about yep. you because of your work yep. ethic yep. so you said you have uh I want to yeah. I want to go back to go ahead said go wherever you want to go potential Come on. yes and challenging folks mm -hmm. um 
there's such a need for that. Yeah. I mean, we have young people that are these brilliant, dynamic yes. Yes. leaders. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have so much to offer and they don't see it. No one's really told them. We had a young lady that was um, sharing with us that her coach, one of our folks, um, we, we call our, mm. our folks coaches mm -hmm. who work with the kids directly. Um, she was saying that how her coach, it was the first time she had received this positive feedback, like, good job. Okay, you got this. You went from an F to a D. Okay, now you got to challenge. Yeah. You got to get mm -hmm. that C. You got to bring it up. You got to level up. Good job. Oh, look at you. You're doing a good job. And we also provide incentives for kids and she was just saying how this is the first time like she's had somebody really encourage her. And and I could see that because I always got that message about being the bad person, mm -hmm. always in trouble. And so when I joined the military, it was this positive reinforcement, you know, this positive expectation. And I just thought, wow, you know, more of our kids need to hear and see that, you know, instead of seeing this bad person, you see this entrepreneur, you see this. I mean, we have so many kids with colorful personalities and it's just, it shouts and it's screaming leadership. So to ask them and challenge them, what are you doing? Like, okay, so you're a senior, you're here because you need these credits that we offer. What do you plan on doing beyond this? Because mm. this is what I've seen from you. I had, for instance, I had one young lady come up to me and she was like, <laughs> she was telling me how um, uh, you, you're the leader, you're in charge, right? And I was like, well, yeah, I mm -hmm. am. She's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. She's like, and, um, but. Before we even had that conversation, she asked me if I could step to the side because she wanted to have a word with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so she wanted to have a word with you, <laughs> and you're like, so, okay, you're right, right? you're okay. right. <laughs> so she's like, you're the leader, right? I was like, yeah. She's like, and this is all about leadership, right? I was like, yeah, it is. She was like, so can I just share with you? You know, some of us really would like to have a few more breaks, and so she just started telling me, giving me feedback mm -hmm. from the group. It was so neat. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so I'm restricted because of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh, okay, I understand that. I was like, so if you could share that. But what we can do is A, mm -hmm. B. She was like, oh, that's what's up, Miss Jackie. That's what's mm -hmm. up. So, but, but a couple that, of days later, but, I asked but to her. that, right? There was something in her that her peers saw. They didn't even ask her. She just took the initiative. Okay, okay. She, 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 she heard okay. what was going on as a problem. She thought, okay. let me take it to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I challenged her on that. I said, okay, you clearly are a leader. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it takes so much for you, one, the way you approached me, can you take me to the side? You took me to the side. Mm -hmm. Two, you articulated the issues that were taking place. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're an advocate. This is community activism. I'm like, I'm all excited. Like, and what she, are you planning on doing? She's an HR director, <laughs> right? <laughs> and an and activist. Yes. Um, a union a, a representative representing people. And, and so because she recognized and then she put it into a, 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 a problem. Yeah. Let's solve it Let's rather solve than letting problem. something yes. um, fester and then grow then become an issue. Right. I mean, I, there were just so many things in that and just having a one on one with her. Like, what do you plan on doing? Like beyond high school, mm -hmm. what are your next steps? And she was like, I don't know. I never thought about it. But she's in the right environment. Absolutely. And program. Absolutely. With you, and she's in good hands. Absolutely. With Lead the Way. So this summer, what, what, are your, um, what, what are your plans for the summer, your programs? Yeah. What, what school districts are you in? Or if you can't talk about that, or we could talk about that later. You know, so, but just, okay, just give us an overview about yeah. what you might be doing um, I'm this excited summer. about mm -hmm. schools that we're currently okay. in. Um, we're in Groveport, Madison High School, mm -hmm. the Charles School, the Graham School. I was within the Charles, yeah. Right, yeah, right. Uh -huh. The Graham School. We're at um, Franklinton High School. We're expanding. Okay. Uh, we actually are doing some work or partnering to do some work over at West High School Briggs. 
we have what I call the West Side Operation Expansion. West Side. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I started when oh, I came here. <laughs> when I first got here, mm. there's a there's just a high need, and mm. uh, we can offer so much over over throughout the city. So I shared earlier. I briefly mentioned we're working on uh, pre offering pre apprenticeships, okay. electrical trades the construction trades and the automotive. So can I get in the automotive one? Cause <laughs> I need to learn how to change oil. Cause I don't know how to do that. I just keep going to Jiffy Lube. Right, right. So can I perhaps? CDL class B. Okay. We have some work-based projects that we're working on. One is mental health. So young people mm. will kind of learn this. It's a train the trainer model. Mm -hmm. So the teens will then go back to their school or in their community and develop programs that are more awareness and preventative. Mm. So with that, we're doing a podcast. Um, the podcast will focus on the mental health and young mm -hmm. people and their voice mm -hmm. here in the community. Uh, we're doing uh, event planning, STNA. Uh, we're What's doing STNA? A I'm, uh, not, I'm not familiar with that term. A, it's a nurse assistant. Okay. A okay. State, okay. Yeah, yeah. State nursing assistant. So, and then we have logistics prep. Mm -hmm. So with all of these that we're offering, young people will have credentials that they walk away with. They'll get all of this training this summer and they have the opportunity to get paid this fall going back into the school year. So the whole goal again is, Okay, the exposure, you've been exposed, you've been trained. Now we're going to go out and really implement. Um, Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal is a big part of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So th these are the skills that employers are saying they want young people to come in to the workplace with. So and we'll I, and I do that. know, and I, ca I can say that as part of your criteria, and as you're putting programs together, that there's always a checklist, making sure. Yep. But not, not that we're just checking things off, but they have actually done the work. Right. And they, they've done the work. And, and so they have, employers have said, these are skills that we know we need. Yep. And so what part of what Lead the Way does, make sure that they meet those requirements. Yep. So they come out and, they, and yep. they're guaranteed. They know that that person is coming out of Lead the Way. They are qualified. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. They understand what showing up on time means. They understand what uh, teamwork, collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, so there are 16 um, areas mm -hmm. or skills that employers really want their young people to come in with. So we really work on that over the summer. Um, you know, speaking of showing up on time, I've had incidents where I've sent young people home. Mm -hmm. um, so you hold them accountable. This is the, this is the, they get a taste of what, are, what it's like in the real world yep. because there's holding, there is accountability yep. and consequences for your action yep. or your inaction. Yep. Yep. And we've seen real change as a result of that mm -hmm. because, you know, if you, if we were to continue letting young people, we're, we're mm -hmm. talking work readiness and we yes. continue to let you be late. Mm -hmm. Come in with all these excuses. You'll be that adult that comes in with all of these excuses. You can't keep a job because who has time for that? I mean, we want you to come in. We want you ready to work. We want you to learn. We want you to bring a good attitude, yes. get along well with others. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that is real really, life skills. Yep. Yep. You know, social skills, yep. how to interact with people, conflict management, how to yep. communicate, um, having feelings and, and emotions, but learning how to have conversation in spite of those things. Yep. Jackie, lead the way. Jackie Kemp, <laughs> lead the way. How can our listeners uh, get in contact with you, find out about your programs? And so if they might have some children that could benefit from or aunties, uncles, you know, yeah. the nieces, nephews, how can they get in contact yeah. with, with Lead the Way? So our website, mm -hmm. Lead the Way Learning Academy dot O-R-G. Lead the Way Learning Academy <laughs> dot O-R-G. Yep. Um, yep. And you can even check out what we're doing. Our latest events. I mean, we, we do work site visits, college mm -hmm. visits. We have right now some work-based learning that is occurring. Mm -hmm. Uh, with high school students who are being exposed to a field that most of them never even imagined. Um, 
it's uh, water and soil conservation. So, yeah, they environmental, environmental yeah. sciences. Yes. So uh, why did I miss this? Horizon Science Academy is also one of our partners. Okay. So, you know, they really into the STEM. So we have a partner, Franklin Soil and Water, and they had this curriculum. So we just kind of came together for a work based experience. And the kids absolutely love it they're being exposed to an area that they, they might not have ever even thought about and they didn't even know existed <clears throat> didn't know yep. and because of lead the way they are seeing a different way exactly there is a way out and we exactly. can't make excuses but, exactly. but organizations like yours are providing and doing an invaluable service and finding ways to fit in to help bridge yeah. the gap yeah so people can go at risk to being people that can be a a uh, part of a, an environment and society rather than being a drain, right? Right. On society. Right. right. Yeah. In addition to this classroom curriculum, mm -hmm. we're actually doing site visits. And at these visits, you know, this, the, the, the water, how it gets cleaned, mm -hmm. <laughs> the bad water, then you have the clean water, mm -hmm. then you have the parks. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. so throughout this, Young people are also finding out these are the jobs available. We're hiring. Here's the requirement. You know, I mean, so there's opportunity at every single place, exposure and opportunity. And employers know because of Ohio means jobs. They know that when they come from lead the way, they have the requisite skills yep. that are necessary to be gainfully employed yep. and then to make money. So, yep. you know, so they can take care of, provide for themselves and for their future. Jackie Kemp, I'm just, I'm so humbled and honored <laughs> uh, to have you here on the Catalyst Podcast because you are always provoking positive change and you are a catalyst in the lives of so many people. And I want to thank you for, um, for sharing this time with me because it's just been one of the highlights, really, <laughs> seriously, and working with your organization, yeah. um, the, affording me the opportunity to help shape and and direct people's lives it's just been phenomenal anything you like to say be in, in closing i just want to say thank you for having me thank you for this opportunity and just encouraging parents who feel like maybe they've reached the end of the road mm -hmm. like i'm a witness a living witness that there's hope mm -hmm. you know helping and holding our kids accountable challenging them yes. to be what you know, what they are, you know? Um, and what you just said, not, what, not who they could be, right, but what they are, because it's already in them. Yep. And it takes people yep. to see what God has yep. placed within them to pull that out of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So challenging your young person is not a bad thing. It's a necessary mm -hmm. thing. It really is. You know, I know sometimes with when kids feel uncomfortable, or even adults feel mm -hmm. uncomfortable in certain situations, you know, what do you do? Are you going to stay? Are you going to leave, avoid it, and just take yourself to the next job? Mm -hmm. And guess what? You're still there. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to encourage parents to challenge a young person, see the good through all the bad, see the good, mm -hmm. get them connected to these positive um, opportunities in the community. So Lead the Way is just one of them. There are so many other organizations offering great services mm -hmm. for our young people, but um, challenging our young people to be better, be who they are. And Lead the Way is one of many, but this is what we're talking about today. <laughs> Lead the Way, Jackie, um, Jackie Kemp, I'm so grateful for your being here and thank you i know in a real sense um as you say our ancestors you know mm. looking down uh, absolutely i know they would be saying you know well done good and faithful servant but you have a whole lot more to do yes yes i do all right i do well, thank you so much, Jackie. I love you and appreciate you. Love you too. Thank you so much, listeners and, and viewers, for tuning in to the Catalyst Podcast. We're always provoking positive change. This is David Salvatore Carter for David Carter's Catalyst Podcast. We'll see you next time.
That's a wrap for today's episode of The Catalyst. I'm your host, David Carter, and I want to thank you for joining me on this journey to provoke positive change. Before we say goodbye, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to The Catalyst on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. If you enjoyed today's show, please consider leaving a rating and review. Your feedback not only helps us improve, but it also helps others find our podcast. I also want to give a special shout out to the Yamo Podcast Network for being our amazing home and our producer, Adam Dell, for making each episode sound incredible. If today's episode inspired you or made you think, please share it with your friends, family, or anyone you think might benefit from our thought provoking conversations. Remember, every catalyst needs a reaction, and you can be the spark that ignites change in others. Once again, I'm David Carter, and this has been The Catalyst. Until next time, keep provoking positive change 